What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay. Today is a bit of an update video on my previous demo review of the Schecter 7 string, my C7 SLS Elite. I'll link that video up here if you didn't see it already, but basically the bottom line is this. The guitar is phenomenal. I love it. It sounds great. It looks amazing. But I was having an issue with the tuners specifically. Uh, these tuners were, for lack of a better word, garbage. You know, this guitar currently costs $1,400 here in the US. And for that amount of money, you expect it to be basically in perfect, flawless working order. Uh, these tuners certainly were not. They're very imprecise. For whatever reason, I don't know. My only guess is maybe they were made at a different manufacturing facility or made by a different manufacturer, or they were the wrong tuning ratio, or I don't know what happened, but somebody dropped the ball on these things, and they're just, they're horrible. So whenever you try to tune it, essentially the string just kind of jumps. It, it does that thing where it just, you turn it a little bit and all of a sudden it does nothing. And then you turn a little more and the string just goes doink and it's way sharp, go the other direction, it's too flat. So overall, it just made the entire process of tuning the guitar extremely frustrating and time consuming. And I just couldn't put up with it anymore. So uh, what I did was I wrote a nice professional, polite email to Schecter customer service, kind of notifying them of this issue. And for two reasons, uh, one was to let them know that there's something wrong with these tuners and they should maybe go back to the manufacturer and check out what's going on, you know, and see if there was a bad batch or they sourced them from the wrong, you know, manufacturer. I have no idea. And B, what were they going to do for me specifically? Because now I'm now the owner of this $1,400 guitar with really crappy tuners on it. I mean, they just suck, for lack of a better word. So after a little bit of back and forth correspondence, they agreed to send me a free set of replacement tuners, which I have here. So what I plan to do here today is put these on a guitar and uh, kind of compare to you know the previous ones to see if they're better, the same, worse, and uh, you know just come along for the ride. So I'm going to be stringing the guitar up with these Ernie Ball 10 to 62s, and I keep this guitar currently in uh, B flat standard essentially, so it's a half step down. So without further ado, let's head over to the workbench, aka my coffee table, and get this put on real quick, and then we'll see how they work. All right, we have now entered the voiceover narration portion of the video. Welcome to it. Uh, you can see there on the left-hand side on the table, I've got my tools that I'll need, basically a Phillips screwdriver, I've got a ratchet with a 10 millimeter head, my new strings obviously, and the new tuners, as well as a roll of tape, specifically painter's tape. I'll explain why in just a moment. It is so much easier changing strings with A, locking tuners, and B, a hardtail bridge just makes the entire job that much easier, which is nice. I could have cut the little ends off so they go through the saddles a little cleaner because you don't want to scuff up your you know, bridge saddles. Here's that painter's tape I was talking about. Okay, uh, I use this specifically because it is very non-sticky, non-abrasive, and I'm going to be putting it on the finish of the guitar for a couple of minutes because I'm super OCD about my bridge saddle height and my string action. Once you get it dialed in just the way you want it, I don't want anything to mess with it. I don't want to chance it by those little, having the little bridge screws, you know, wiggle out of place. And the 10 millimeter ratchet there to get the uh, nuts off the tuners. And then I take them off by hand, obviously. Uh, when you get a new replacement set of tuners, make sure that you order the correct set as far as uh, the configuration, because this is three on top, four on the bottom, and it does matter matter because the, on the back they're unidirectional, so they only go one way. And you take, a, take the screwdriver out, rather you take out the uh, retaining screws with the screwdriver, to be more specific. If you can turn a screwdriver, you can do this job, and it's super simple. Um, probably it will take you less than half an hour. As you can see, I move pretty fast here. This is my normal speed. This is not sped up. <laughs> okay. When you get the tuners off, yeah, I polish it up a little bit. Might as well. When the strings are off, always clean the fretboard off, you know, a little bit. Here I'm just kind of uh, making sure that I indeed do have the 3x4 configuration, that they sent me the right, you know, set, and they did, which is awesome. And whenever I put uh, bolts or screws back in place, I always kind of just put them in hand tight first, make sure everything's lined up and you know in, in line and all that good stuff before I tighten it down. Uh, leave a comment down below if you think you know what I'm listening to in my earbuds. Hint. It's in the metal genre. All 
If you think this is fast, you should see how I move after I get a couple of cups of coffee in me. It's insane. Make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed this kind of workbench uh, time-lapse video. Even if you hate it, leave a like. It helps out the channel immensely. You know, they say, don't quit your day job. You ever hear that uh, adage? Well. I did, I'm trying to make this a full-time thing, so crush that subscribe button. I appreciate it immensely. Okay, I'm making sure everything's nice and tight here. Then I'm gonna ratchet it down just gently, just till it's snug. You don't wanna crank it on there. It's wood after all, you don't wanna damage it. Just so it stays in place. And those do back out over time, those nuts on tuners. So whenever you do a string change, you might wanna just check them by hand. They get loose for some reason. Here we go. Time to put the strings on. I've been using Ernie Ball strings for uh, quite a few years now. I tried a bunch of different brands, but I just found that these seem to work well for me. I like the string tension on them. They last, they're decent. You know, I'm not gonna say they're the best of the best because I don't really know. But if you find something that you like, you know, a certain brand or a certain gauge, just stick with it. Don't let that whole fear of missing out or, um, you know, the gas syndrome get to you. Don't listen to other people on the internet. Use what works for you. Love Ernie Ball Strings. I am not endorsed or sponsored by them in any way, although I would like to be. So, you know, Ernie Ball, shout out. Let me know. Yeah, again, I'm using the uh, 10 to 62 set on here. And um, if I was going to down tune any more, though, I'd definitely have to go heavier because there are... They're almost a little too slack, but not quite. You know, I like a little bit of just a certain tension, I guess. You get used to the tension you like on strings. And I find that if for some reason they don't have my gauge in stock at the local, you know, guitar store, um, I'll buy a different brand, you know. Sometimes I'll do the Diodarios, and they're good too. But I do find that the string tension for the same exact gauge pack still feels a little bit different, especially on the... Um, the smaller, the thinner strings. If only string changes were this fast in real life, right guys? Oh my God. I swear string changes are the bane of my existence. Especially when it's on a floating trim, forget about it. In fact, the guitar that's sitting on the couch right now in the background, I just changed those strings and I put a different gauge on there and it's a floating trim and God forbid, that took me hours to like set in perfectly dialed in the way I want it. String action height, you know, the angle of the trim and keeping them in tune. Boom, we're done. Time to take it for a test drive. <laughs> So there it is guys, these tuners solve the issue completely. I offered to send my original set back to them for review, they can kind of you know investigate and see what's up with those, but I haven't heard back. So I'll keep you posted if they do decide to take those back and see what they say. If you are interested in this guitar, I've got a link down below, check it out. And uh, yeah, this thing is amazing man, having a lot of fun with this all over again, falling in love with this guitar all over again. Thank you Schechter, you guys rock. Talk to you guys soon, I'm out of here. See ya!